Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all are doing fine. Today we are starting with alginate. Now before we do that, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Hina and I make dental videos with an intention to help dental students from all around the world. So if you are watching from any part of the world and you find the video helpful, please do encourage me by giving a thumbs up, by subscribing to my channel and also by commenting. So. Let us proceed with the video. Now, alginate is called irreversible hydrocolite. Okay. So, let us break these terms. Okay. Now, irreversible means it cannot come back to its original form once it has changed. Right. When we talk about alginate, irreversible means when you mix water and the powder and it forms a solid mass. You cannot convert it back to the original form. You cannot mold it again. It is done. Let me just write it here. Can't be reversed. Okay. Now, hydrocolloid. To understand hydrocolloid, let me just break this term into two. We have hydro plus colloids. Okay. Now, First, we will see what are colloids. And to know what is colloid, let me go to the very basics. Okay. So, any solution, it can be in three forms. It could be a true solution. Okay. It can be a suspension. And it can be a colloid. Okay. Now, a true solution is one. In that we have a homogeneous mixture means the solid will completely dissolve in the liquid and you cannot differentiate you cannot find out or you know have that solid particles in the liquid but in suspension we have the particles dispersed in the liquid they can be seen right they are larger than 10 raised to minus 4 centimeter and you can even see them by the naked eye or through a microscope. So, there is a suspension. Okay. So, a suspension is solid dispersed in liquid, but the particles are large here. So, you can differentiate it with your naked eye or by a microscope. We have one more term and that is emulsion. Right. Now, emulsion is when liquid is dispersed in liquid. Liquid is dispersed in liquid. For example, if we have oil which is in water, so that will make an emulsion, right? Now, colloid is also a heterogeneous mixture, means it is just like suspension only, it is heterogeneous, not a homogeneous mixture like the true solution, it is a heterogeneous. But here, the two phases are not readily differentiated here in suspension we could differentiate it because we could see it because we could see it with our naked eye or with the help of microscope but in colloid we will not be able to do so this thing right here it should come somewhere in between this right in between the true solution and the suspension it is neither a true solution because it still has particles and it is not even suspension because you cannot differentiate it. Okay. Okay. So we have a definition of colloids. I have written all these things beforehand so that, you know, it saves a lot of time. So a colloid is a heterogeneous mixture of two phases where the two phases are not readily differentiated. Now, the question is, what is hydrocolloid? Right? We are adding the term hydro to colloid. And hydro means... What does it mean? It means water. So, hydrocolloid is just colloid with water. When you have the liquid, when you have the liquid as water, that is hydrocolloid. Okay. Now, dental hydrocolloids, they exist in two forms. We have two forms. We have a sol and we have a gel. Now, sol Simply speaking, can be said that it is a viscous liquid. I'll just explain it in a while. And gel is elastic. 
solid okay so here in sol the dispersed phase is a solid we have solid particles they are the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium it will be a liquid but in elastic solid we have the opposite we have the opposite in elastic solid the liquid which is here it will be the dispersed phase opposite and this solid will be the dispersion medium so now i am just making a block of solid and in that we have now liquid okay so that is a gel okay so we are done with the basics now now alginate was developed as a substitute to agar agar during the world war 2 okay in the world war 2 agar agar was getting deficient so to have an alternative material alginate was developed and how it was developed we had a natural substance which was the brown seaweed okay and from this brown seaweed a substance was extracted and that was an hydro beta d manuronic acid it was long name in hydro beta d okay in hydro beta d manuronic acid or a short name alginic acid okay so from a natural substance brown seaweed a substance was extracted and that substance and that substance was an hydro beta d manuronic acid or alginic acid now this alginic acid okay this is insoluble in water this is insoluble so how will you actually mix it with water and get that you know thick consistency product to take the impression how for that we use the salts of alginic acid we use sodium or potassium salts so to make it soluble we are using sodium potassium salts of alginic acid now coming to the composition of alginate we have potassium alginate the first one is the potassium alginate here we are using potassium as the salt we can also use sodium right so potassium alginate is the chief ingredient here so this will this will be our what let me change the color this will be our soluble alginate i'm sorry there is some network issues here and then we have the calcium sulfate what is calcium sulfate this is the reactor so calcium sulfate will react with potassium alginate then we have these two zinc oxide and diatomaceous earth these are fillers now the purpose of diatomaceous earth is to increase the strength the stiffness of alginate also it helps in producing a smooth texture now zinc oxide on the other hand can also alter the setting time of the alginate then we have the potassium titanium fluoride which is the accelerator accelerator so this will accelerate the setting of the stone so that a hard dense stone cast surface is produced and then we have the sodium phosphate which is a retarder retarder now it retards the reaction which is happening between calcium sulfate and potassium alginate it retards it right and we will see this in a while when we discuss the gelation process now basically when you mix the alginate with water what happens is the soluble alginate which is you know the potassium alginate or the sodium alginate it will react with the calcium sulfate what is calcium sulfate it is the reactor this soluble alginate was the main ingredient 
main active ingredient right and this will react with the reactor that is the calcium sulfate and it will produce the calcium alginate gel now this reaction occurs very fast when it occurs very fast we will get a very short setting time we will get a very short working time right now to improve that to get a better working time we add something which is trisodium phosphate it is the retarder basically so now what will happen now when we add this trisodium phosphate to this entire assembly what will happen this calcium sulfate which was reacting with the soluble alginate it will now prefer to react with trisodium phosphate you can imagine that you know tricalcium sulfate is enemy of this but tricalcium sulfate is a bigger enemy of trisodium phosphate so when he sees this he will attack him first rather than attacking him okay so first he will attack trisodium phosphate and and when this gets you know eaten up or it gets reduced in quantity then the calcium sulfate will start reacting with the soluble alginate so because of this we get a longer working time right so we can adjust the amount of trisodium phosphate means we can adjust the amount of retarder so that we get a different setting alginate we have the normal set we have the fast setting alginate so all depends on the trisodium phosphate now clinically we cannot alter this right because we get it in the packets and we just have to mix water nothing else could be done but there is one thing that could be done and that is the temperature of water and that is the temperature of water water temperature now you must have noticed that during winters the setting time is increased why because we have cold water during that time so when the water is cold what will happen the setting time or say the working time will increase and we when we have a hot it will decrease so we can have this cold water hot water or even the instruments can be made to be little bit cold so that we get the desired working time now in the next video we will be discussing the manipulation of alginate also we will be having a look at the properties of alginate in detail along with the clinical significance here and there just to add to your knowledge so i hope you found this video helpful and if you did you know what to do you have to subscribe to my channel it's free and it is a big encouragement for me to make more such videos so i am signing off to see you in the next video take care allah hafiz